Let's face it, file sharing fails happen to everyone, but these five, totally avoidable. Let's fix them once and for all. I'm in OneDrive on the web. So once I've found the file I want to share, I can simply hover beside that file, find that little square with the arrow in it, or I could click the three dots to choose share, or if I click on a file, a menu pops up at the top and I have share there. So many ways to share your files, but are we sharing them the right way? So let's go to fail number one. Let's talk about the dangers of sharing a link with anyone. So if I go to the share button here, once you get this pop up, you can type in a name of a person that's within your organization or outside of your organization, any email address really. And to the right of it, we have the pencil, which really means can edit. But we're talking about more than just this here. I'm going to go down to the gear, which is my settings for the share. And this is the dangerous one. When you choose share with anyone, you really have to mean it because share with anyone means that anyone that gets a hold of this link can have access to it. And in this case, we're saying they can edit, which means they can edit it. We could certainly say share with anybody, but give them read only option rather than edit. And that's by doing the option here, just view. But the danger here is we have no control over this item because if we email this link to somebody, that recipient could forward that email with the link in it to somebody else and that person could click on the link and we'll have no idea who that other person is. So sharing with anyone really opens us up for risk. Let's talk about the benefits of doing this for just a second and that would be if the person you're sharing with does not have a Microsoft account, they can still access this file. They don't need to sign in to any account. They don't even need to have Word or Excel or whatever the program file is that you're sharing with them. They could still open up the file. It's relatively easy for the person on the other end to just access the file. We're calling this a danger though because of the risk level. So instead of saying share with anyone, it's better that you choose one of the other three options. And if it is somebody outside your organization, then choose the option that says people you choose. People you choose means that you are typing in the email address of a specific person or you're typing a name of a specific person in your organization and only that person can open the link. They can forward that link all they want. It won't work for other people. Okay, so that's your fix. Now fail number two is all about a file that you have linked to somebody or some group of people, but that link never dies. But maybe your file that you've linked to is actually out of date now. They still have access to that out of date file. So the best way to avoid this issue is that when you choose those link settings and you choose whether they can edit or they can view, let's just change this one to view, then you also wanna choose an expiration date. So in this way, we're saying we're going to have this link active for them to view until this time. And after that, they can click on the link all they want. They won't have access to it. It won't take them anywhere. So make your links last for as long as they really need to be lasting for. Now, what about the scenario where you've created that link a while ago and that person still has access to the file, but you actually don't want them to have access anymore? What do you do then? Well, we can manage those access rights and actually revoke them entirely. So I'm going to go into a couple of files that I've already shared. So the mission difference here, I'm clicked on that file. I'm going to go to the three dots this time. I don't want to go to share because share is just the act of me sharing the file with somebody. I'm going to go to my menu and say, I want to manage the access level that these the share has. So click on manage access. And this is me. So this is not who I'm sharing with, but I do see that there's links out there that I've shared. So I'm going to click on the arrow to see who the people are. In this case, there's only one person. So I could hit the X beside that person so that person no longer has access. Or of course, you see at the top here, stop sharing would be an option for me as well. Or I could just hit the little garbage can and remove this link from being in existence. So whichever way you want, if you don't want that person to have access anymore, choose one of these options. I'll just hit the little X and it says, do you want to remove this person from having access? And I do. And there you go. Now it still shows that link is active, but that person has been removed. So if you want to be extra careful on this one, I think I'm just going to take an extra bit of caution and remove the link entirely as well. So click on remove link. 
and it doesn't work for anyone anymore is what that's saying. Okay. So in terms of determining, who, you know, where do I do this? How do I even start finding out who I've shared with and who I need to remove access for? Within the OneDrive app on the left-hand side of your screen under My Files, which is what I'm in here. And actually, I'm going to click on this little guy at the top here to make this a little bit bigger, the navigation pane. Then I first see a list of items that have been shared with me, but I want to go to the ones that I've shared. So by me. And these are the ones that I've shared with somebody. And so those are the ones I would go into the three dots and manage that access. And in the links area, simply choose stop sharing. Okay. So a little bit of cleanup needed. I want to give you a quick example of what things look like in Windows Explorer. It really is the same kind of idea, just a little bit different in how you access that share area. So if I want to create a share on one of my files from Windows Explorer, I'm going to go to the file and if I right click on the little cloud beside it, I actually get a shorter menu that has OneDrive available to me there that says I can share that file or manage the access or even just copy the link, which really is the same as share. Copy link you want to be careful of because what kind of access are you giving? Is it an anyone access? Is it a view access or a write access? That's why when you say share, you can at least see, in this case, I can see that it's, that it's an edit access. And then I have my link settings that I can go further with and change stuff in here. Okay, right from Windows Explorer, I can do this. So if I were to right click on the name of the file, OneDrive is a little bit of a longer menu, but OneDrive is still available to me there. And I still have those same options available to me as well. Okay, so either of those examples we just did, you can manage access from here and stop the sharing. We can share from here and change the settings as well. And actually, I'm just noticing in our menu, we do have a share option that looks exactly like the one you saw when you were in OneDrive. So this one will work just the same as OneDrive share will work. More than one way of doing it. Now let's talk about the fourth fail. Is everyone in your office working on their own copy of the same file? Within Microsoft OneDrive, you have the option of co-authoring. That's the whole point of having your documents in OneDrive is that you can all access the file together. And so that's why you would share a file with somebody is because you want them to co-author with you. And aside from that benefit of more than one person being able to edit the file, you also have the benefit of seeing who changed what. And so if I go to the top of my file area where the name of my file is, and click on it. There's an option there that says version history. There's more than one way to get to version history. That's just one way. I'm going to click on this and then I'm going to click on the just now and you're going to see the file that we were just looking at. But if I go to a previous version and you notice there's Connie in two colors and that's just because I have my, my true login for Connie and then I have a, a secondary login for example purposes and that's what this purple one is here. If I go to a previous version, you notice that everything is underlined because in this previous version at 419, that's when everything was typed. Now, if I go to just now, anything underlined there represents new things that were typed. So at the very bottom, those two sentences were typed in here. If you're in the Word application, the desktop app, then the file option would have version history available to you in it as well. So many places to find version history. But the point of this example is that you have one link, one file, one source of truth. Okay. Another thing worth noting is that while I'm in a file, I do have a share button at the top and that does give me the option to share this file with somebody else, just like you saw me doing within the OneDrive web app, as well as within the Windows File Explorer. And I do have manage access available to me here as well. So share is very convenient. Lots of places for us to choose it. And that's why it could get us into trouble sometimes because we choose it and we just go and don't look at the settings. So your lesson here is check those settings, right? Now you've shared dozens of files with numerous people and your shared area could be looking a bit disorganized or hard to manage, whether it's files you've shared or files people have shared with you. There's a lot here. OneDrive is a Microsoft cloud app for storage that's best meant for individual or personal use. You want to use this area when most of the files are for you and don't normally have to be shared. The sharing might be a scenario that's just kind of a one off. If you're regularly sharing a number of files with a group of people, then you shouldn't be using OneDrive. Your better options are 
SharePoint, or Teams. These two Microsoft applications are meant for sharing. And the whole idea here is if you're using Teams, then you create a team, which is a group of people that you want to share information with. And you can have more than one team. And so you put the files that you want to share with the one team, and you can have different files you want to share with a different team. Similarly with SharePoint, with SharePoint, you could have more than one SharePoint site. And there's all kinds of extra sharing capabilities with Within SharePoint, as the name suggests, it's meant for sharing. And so you use the SharePoint so that you could share a group of files with that group of people that are meant to have access to those files. And those files could be read-only files, or they could be files that you want everybody to edit. You have those choices here as well. So if you're sharing on a regular basis to a group of people, don't use OneDrive, use SharePoint or Teams. OneDrive is for me. SharePoint or Teams is for the we. File sharing fails happen, but they don't have to happen to you. What's your OneDrive oops story? Share with me in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.